Hey, and welcome to another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. And yeah, we all, you know, of course we had the big countdown for the Mission Impossible series. Commentaries are available now. Uh, you know, uh, some of us went and saw Rogue, uh, Rogue Nation this past week. What do you guys think? I enjoyed it. Uh, I think the first thing coming out of the theater was just like overwhelming just because there's, you know, it's just explosions and people backstabbing each other and death defying stunts. Why do the stunts look real? Because they are real. <laughs> um, you know, all that kind of Thanks, Tom. Uh, fun shenanigans. But uh, I think as I kind of thought about it and I was telling uh, Josh and Sam, um, you know, give it a couple of days to think about it because I, I did. I really love the movie, but I'd still say three is my favorite one. Um, because three has just like, it's just, there's something so, Magical. well, there's just something so different about that one, you know, as if you get to see the uh, Ethan's life for a bit, him trying to get out of it, you know? Do you think that maybe it's possibly because, and sorry, Josh, impossibly. but yeah, impossibly that, uh, mission mm-hmm. impossible two was so upsetting to you that when you saw mission impossible three, you were so happy that that's why it's the one that's up on the pedestal for you. No. Cause I mean, they could have just had. Tom Cruise running for an hour and a half, <laughs> and I would have been it still would have probably been. I mean, to be fair, it is Mission Impossible. It's so true. Um, he probably is running for an hour and a half. But I think he runs the most in three. But uh, well, that explains it. It does. <laughs> also, I like him with short hair. Uh, although he has like a kind of like the long. He has like a mix in this one, you know. Because I'm, I'm worried about Tom Cruise's <laughs> hair in this one. Um, but no, it was fun. I mean, again, you're going to get like uh, like Sam was saying with with most spy films, uh, exotic locations. Uh, you know, big explosions, ladies. big stunts. Yeah, the actress in this one, I can't. Remember, it's what's her name, Sam? Uh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, she was great. It's really a showcase she was, for. She was probably she's the strongest female over Paula Patton. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, she has. She's not Paula Patton. I mean, let's not get crazy here. And that's the biggest problem with this movie <laughs> that Paula Patton's not in the movie. You want to get nuts? Yeah, yeah. Let's get nuts. <laughs> I love Paula Patton. She's fantastic. But no, but her character, uh, the, the the actress in in Five, it's like uh, like she's almost. Uh, a main character right along Tom Cruise I mean she is um, and you know again yeah it's a showcase yeah and so yeah she, you know, she's she got more to do Paula Patton is Paula Patton um, I hope she comes back for future installments that would just be the fantastic they've talked about it apparently the sixth one's supposed to go in production next year yeah because they don't want to do that like four or five year break anymore yeah and and, and uh, I haven't been checking on it but early critical and financial stuff seems to be doing really well like really well for Mission Impossible movies and that's so cool like I don't know you think back because I kind of remember when the first one came out and people yeah. were like, oh, it's based on that TV show. And it's become this massively awesome, fun as shit franchise. You Ghost know? Protocol is the highest grossing film in the series. I would say, and I know Sam will enjoy this, that four is probably the best, still the best overall. I mean, my favorite is three, but uh, uh, four is the best overall. But three, three, three is my favorite. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both phenomenal films. And, and the reason, and I think five goes right in there with three, four, and five, you know, or three and four. You know, and five. <laughs> five just is just as good, good as, as five. five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it struggles a little bit from what five did, but it was just try- as good as five. You know, there were parts where I was like, this is trying too hard to be like five. I know, and you didn't even see it. That's yeah. the crazy thing. Yeah. I think it was shot for shot like five. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I would say it was shot like... I, I would say it's definitely more... You know, of, it's, of a five. It's cool though because they got the whole crew from five to redo it. That's so. the crazy thing. I didn't yeah. notice that at first, but then when I watched <laughs> five, I was like, "This is exactly like five, but you know, there's a twist in it." They, I feel like, I feel like they got the director, and then like the actors, they look just like, and then I realized it is the actors. That's crazy. Well, I <laughs> mean, the twist. That, that, that's Hollywood magic at work, guys. That's true. Just perfect, Josh. Yeah. What did you think of it? Yeah. Did you like uh, five or five? <laughs> I, I, I Which like five. Did you like better? I like the sixth. Five. That's retarded. That's that's not that's not a real. That was the weakest in the series. That's where they got <laughs> well, that's John Woo like, back. Yeah, to John Woo. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you know that why. Was worse I like than it. Mission Impossible Two. Yeah, Mission Impossible Rogue Dove or <laughs> Rogue <laughs> Pigeon. If you're a retarded man like me, <laughs> <laughs> that's the twist. Yeah, that's enough. Listen to the Mission Impossible Two. Sound, suffer through the Mission Impossible Two movie with us, tweet. just to hear me. <laughs> no, be stupid. tweet at Jake. At Jake Bozick. With pictures of doves. How stupid I am. To be fair, there were some of us who didn't suffer through that, Jake. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were, uh, you know. There's not one, some. One, out, one, one. out of every four, <laughs> you know, geeks from Geek Out that watch it had a boner throughout the entire thing. And then yep. Ken sit here and watch it without any audio. Yeah, he was just organizing his Spider-Man books. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had the John Romita Jr. I remember he's like, hey, who signed this book? And I was like, 
fucking John Romita Jr. He's like, really? I was like, oh shit, I should have said like nobody <laughs> and be like, that's not worth anything. I'll take that. <laughs> But no, Way to have honor. <laughs> Shit. Since the first film, every single other one in the series really hasn't gotten my heart racing. There haven't been scenes where it's been me thinking. Not even two? I thought you were all. I thought that was like your jam. Well, no, two is. It didn't get his heart racing. Okay. It yeah. got his it's boner pitter patter. racing. It was exactly. a pitter patter. <laughs> yes. But no, since one, there haven't been a whole lot of scenes throughout the franchise that have really got me, you know, suspense. Not even like the building in Dubai. Or that's still the best stunt. In the, I mean, I, the, the hanging out the plane is fantastic. It's crazy. What but, I like about the hang out of the plane is they knock like since that's all in the trailers and yeah, like the fucking quick. poster. They're just like, here it is. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you've seen it on the trailers, and we're gonna show it to you. Yeah, but awesome. I don't know if Sam or Jake noticed, but throughout most of this one, I was leaning forward in my seat most mm-hmm. of the time. Like this one captivated my attention. Trying to get out. I yeah. thought you just. <laughs> I thought you just had a lumbar problem. Well, I do, but no, this one captivated my attention. Probably the most since the very first entry in the franchise, which I have to say is quite a feat for these films to have done. I mean, what I like about Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation is that it combines the the kind of spectacle that we get with Ghost Protocol with the kind of wheels within wheels, the cloak and dagger aspect that's really prevalent in one. Yeah, this felt almost uh, story-wise a complete return to what made a lot of the scenes in one so Sus- uh, suspenseful, I felt, and you know, also so you re- didn't know John Voight was the bad guy. Well, yeah, things like that, but also <laughs> referencing, red light, green light. <laughs> red light! you know, they they made green points to light! reference a lot of things that happened in the past they do, they entries do. as well. Unfortunately, the exception of two. Well, they, I feel like the motorcycle things is the that's chase. The biggest nod. That's the biggest nod. Well, yeah, I guess so. But like, and actually, motorfi- motorcycles kissing. Yes. Yeah, but. You know, going out of their way to reference, like, uh, stealing the knock list from the CIA. Mm -hmm. Uh, The film opens directly with scenes from the fourth entry as well. When they reference the building being hit by the nuke and, like, causing damage. And then if you look in the background, every TV is showing clips from three. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) There's just a random. J.J. Abrams is on the team. There's yeah. a random <laughs> dove flying through explosions on one of the Ethan TVs. Ethan Hunt goes to a Seven Eleven again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billy Crudup's there somehow. Yeah. Buy, <laughs> buys more disposable cameras, even though they don't sell them anymore. Yeah. Oh, the uh, if you choose to accept this mission scene, I think was probably one of the most clever devices. You well, what they used to display his mission was probably one of the most. <laughs> clever things i think they've used so far in the series i remember when that happened the little twist of it i wanted to turn around and look at everyone like hey you fucking seeing this man like he's getting <laughs> gypped man this isn't re- this isn't how it goes <laughs> yeah i've seen four of the other movies this is how it works mm-hmm. um but it was cool though and you get to see like ethan is tested you know physically mentally emotionally with the villain in this one. Oh yeah he's m- very Sexually? much kind of like uh Kind of a lone man on the totem pole for a while. Yeah, yeah, and and so Cruz, you get, and you were saying the guy who directed Jack Reacher directed this. Yes, yeah, McCory. Yeah. He also uh, wrote the script. So I got that vibe. Like, you know, Jack, the Jack Reacher character is a much more in like tense, no bullshit. Like that scene when the guy calls, and he's just like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you, make you drink blood from a boot." Fuck <laughs> you. Um, I love Jack Reacher. Just by the way. like, yeah, yeah no, Jack I love Reacher's Jack Reacher. Fucking too. awesome. Damn, but no uh, I feel like there, but there's there's a couple there's a couple, this makes this is not. This is like not the reason why, but I got like some Jack Reacher vibes from the movie, like the way Cruz played Ethan Hunt in this one. Like, yeah, he enjoyed. Like it wasn't about just about the mission; he enjoyed taking this dude down. I oh, gotta yeah. say, I finally watched Jack Reacher. Did you? And I loved it. It's so much fun, dude. When he beats the guy in the head with the rocks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking awesome. Although his driving skills kind of make sense now between what he did in the uh, gravel pit in Jack Reacher mm-hmm. and with. You oh, know, driving asking, back. Yeah, yeah. I'd tell him, Benji, do you have your seatbelt on for what he's about to do? Simon Pegg was good in this. Yeah, one. yeah. They give him a lot more to do. Did Bing, he, he, Bing he Rames had... has more than just oh, the cameo. Yeah. With Bing Rames. Oh. Cool. Nice. Good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Did Simon Pegg have any like writing credit no, in this one or anything? No, nah, not that I know of. I think he was too busy writing Star Trek Beyond. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's Can't cool. We just get Beyond Star Trek. <laughs> 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 Not yet. Yeah. And we grind to a fucking <laughs> yeah. all, yeah. man. I mean, that's it, guys. If that's I'm show. good for one thing, 
It's grinding the yeah, shit. Yeah, we call you old grind and halt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. Dude, he has like a grinder in the back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. Like, yeah. yeah. This is going too well. Yeah. I'm going to have to grind yeah. this to a halt. It's like a jack in the box. You know it's going to happen eventually. It'll pop out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much um, like my penis. <laughs> uh, grind That's, and halt. Is that the name of your first porn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine was stop and catch fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Josh's yeah. was Mr. Robot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would personally rank Rogue Nation, you know, behind you know, like Ghost Protocol is my favorite, then mm-hmm. three, and then Rogue Nation. Yeah, it's funny, it's weird. Even though I would say the best made movie is four, I'd rank it third <laughs> on my well, list. The first Rocky is the best made Rocky, but I mean that's the one I would put one on my list. Yeah, and Rocky so. Balboa is the best made sequel. Yeah, and I'd be three on my list. But the best Rocky movie, my no, your favorite, Rocky Rocky your your favorite, my Rocky, favorite Rocky, yeah. Rocky movie. There's no such thing as best, only favorite. Yeah, my favorite Rocky movie is Rocky Five. <laughs> three, <laughs> <laughs> three all day. As every Sam day. Sam just yeah. stabs me. Yeah. No yeah. more grind and hold Nolan. <laughs> now you're stuck and bleed. I got the grinder now. <laughs> Which was Jake's. Yeah, first thank you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, you also saw, you know, speaking of boxing, yeah. you also saw Southpaw. I did. Um, Southpaw. Yeah. The, uh, they don't explain the origin of Southpaw on that one. Um, how do you really know it's a Southpaw? I mean, because I saw Rocky one, I guess. That's how I knew. <laughs> but, you know, it's cool. Th- this movie really focuses on uh, Gyllenhaal is very, very good in it. And I, one of the reasons I was like, I'm just going to go and see it. Because I was telling Sam, I'll probably wait for like a $5 Wednesday or something. Was uh, uh, my dad and I had ordered some like subs or uh, some some food and stuff, um, and we watched End of Watch. I had seen it recently for the first time, and he hadn't seen it. And I was like, "Let's watch End of Watch." And I really, really love that movie. And uh, uh, when it was over, I was like, "You know what? I'm you know I'm in Jake Gyllenhaal mode. I'm gonna go see uh, Southpaw." And it the movie focuses a lot on boxing, which I know people are like no fucking shit. But it does. I mean, the beginning of the movie, you sit there for a couple minutes as you see his hands getting taped up, and you see the fighting commi- like the fighting commission guys. They have to sign off on it to make sure your, your hands are taped correctly before you put the gloves on. You know, they go over like all the like different things that you have to do before a fight, and they really harp on the moments after a fight and then morning after a fight. So Jake Gyllenhaal is like punch drunk, you know. Afterwards, he wins, but he's got the Rocky mentality where he doesn't block. He gets hit in the face because he wants to get angry, and then he goes for it. He's got a bum eye too. And so he's like sitting backstage and they have to do a press conference like right afterwards, you know, and he's like just he's like just leaning over and blood is just like just globbing out of his mouth, you know, and he's like Ugh, and just fucked up. And then the next morning he wakes up in like, you know, his mansion and his pillow is covered in blood because he's been bleeding all throughout the night, you know, and he wakes up and he's like cut. You guys have seen the trailer, obviously, he, but he's like got lumps and he's swollen and he can't move and his hands are fucked up. Um, but. For me, I feel like the big emotional like oomph moments didn't hit me like I was hoping they were going to. Um, but as I think about it, you know, a the, the couple of days after, it, I thought it was a really good boxing movie. Um, the fight scenes were fantastic; like they felt like a boxing match. Uh, they were really, really well done. The film was originally supposed to star Eminem. Do you think it would have how it would have done as well if it? I would have liked it way less, right? Because um, Gyllenhaal is what, what kept it going for me. Because I think he's a really, really... I mean, you know, uh, uh, what was the one he did that uh, the one that we saw in the theaters recently? Nightcrawler? Nightcrawler. That's a movie you like, watch and never watch again because it's fucked. It's very, very good performance. And I'm surprised he didn't get nominated for an Oscar very for well that. Made, yeah. That's insane to me. Uh, it's uh, Southpaw is directed by Fuqua, the guy that directed Training Day. Oh, okay. So that was like, weird because David Ayers wrote that movie. So... Um, I don't know. That kind of makes sense in some weird way, but because uh, I just watched it to watch. But uh, I thought it was really solid. The 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 girl who plays his daughter is really well. You know, is really good. She's got a really you know big time emotional moments. There's one scene though. Like I figured it, going into this movie, it gets like a you know it's a heavy handed. You know what's going to happen. You know about the downfall of him, and then he rises back up. But there's one scene that like absolutely wrecked me in the movie, and it's a scene where. Uh, uh, in the tra- if you've seen the trailers and spoiler if you don't know what happens but in the trailer uh, and in the movie surprisingly uh, Rachel, McAd- Ma- Rachel McAdams is shot and killed on accident during um, a charity event um, because this the, the one of the contenders for the belt one of his like cronies has a gun goes off and uh, so she dies and it's a really horrible scene like it's really fucked up um, and they have the funeral and then the next scene is 
uh, the little girl, his daughter, and Jake Gyllenhaal, and they're, it's the first night without the mother that we've seen. And she has a little nightlight on, and he goes in, and he's like, you know, fucked up because of the fight and everything, and he's like, do you need anything? Do you want me to get you some food? And he can barely get the words out. And she's like, no. And he turns the light off, and she goes, well, mommy always kept the light on. And he's like, oh, okay. And he turns the light on, and as he's leaving, he's like, you know, I love you, good night. And then the little girl goes, dad? Like, daddy, I want to ask you like, ask her a question, ask him a question. And he goes, you know, he's in, there's a great shot of him just standing, this like big framed guy standing in the hallway. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, never mind. And then he tries to say goodnight back to her and he can't like even get the words out. It's like, this, like, you know, this like pathetic, you know, just, he just totally breaks down. And then the next, he's just sitting and like, you know, it's just this crumbling of like this, this big bad man. And that was a really powerful scene. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. If I had to give it, like, a grade or whatever, it'd probably be, like, a C-plus or a B. Um, you know, I was hoping I was hoping it would be a little bit more of an oomph to it. But uh, Forrest Whitaker plays the the manager later on in the movie for old uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. And there is, a, I think, an original Eminem song. I'm not up to date on my Eminem. But uh, it's fun. I mean, it not fun. I don't know why I said that. It's uh, it's entertaining and uh it's a it's a solid boxing movie. Like I said, you get to see a lot more than just the fight. You get to see the the, the beginning and the aftermath of it. And uh, Gyllenhaal's really good. You know, I I just wish that the movie was doing a little bit better um, to get a little more um, recognition for the performance he gives because I think he put a lot into it. And uh, that shows from Jake Gyllenhaal, which is pretty solid. He's usually the best part of those kind of movies. Yeah. Like, again, like like I don't like Jarhead, but he's really good in Jarhead. Yeah. You know, Nightcrawler is the again yeah. example. Yeah. Um, um, Prince of Persia. <laughs> 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 have you guys seen End of Watch? Yeah. No, I have not. Oh, really, no, that's really good. It's on Netflix, I believe. Uh, it no. was. Yeah, Did it take well, it off? It's not anymore. Uh, Nightcrawler just recently came out to Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. If you've never seen it, it's beautifully shot. He does a good job. Renee Russo does a good job. She does. But it's one of those movies you just never watch it's, again. Oh man, it's so it's rough. Well, rough, you'd rough. never watch it again just because of. What the material is about, yeah, not it's because so it's a see- horrible movie. Yeah, you just need a. Well, no, it's not a horrible like, movie. It's yeah. a good movie, like the Last Unicorn. Apparently, I've never actually oh. seen it, but everyone's like, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. a girl I work with. That's like one of her favorite fucking. Movies. Yeah, yeah, never yeah. seen it. But apparently, uh, music by I, America. I feel like I feel like it has one of those scenes, like Falcor drowning in the uh, in or not Falcor, um, Atreyu, the, Atreyu, yeah, Atreyu and the, the 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 Pegasus in the the swamp. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like it has one of those scenes. Just based on the title, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and probably. the way and the way that you know, like people geek out about it, they're like, "Oh, it's such a great movie," but it's so sad. Yeah, it's yeah, like all the feels and shit like that. Yeah, all those buzzwords now. Like when I make jokes about being a leaf in the wind, and Firefly fans just start crying. Yeah, live strong, Wash. Uh, the uh, you saw something completely not Southpaw or Rogue Nation. <laughs> I did. Uh, I saw Mr. Holmes uh, with uh, with Magneto as Sherlock Holmes, uh, and it was it was really cool. It was it was a beautiful little like send off to Sherlock Holmes, and I thought that it was like almost like perfectly timed since we ha- uh, you know since uh, even though uh, BBC is making another season of their Sherlock show, like I feel like we've been like kind of oversaturated with Sherlock. We had the Robert Downey Jr. movies. Uh, it's you know, it, it was it was it was high time for just like old man Sherlock, who's already done and is re- like basically retiring, and that's what it was. It was about it was about uh, Ian McKellen plays, you know, a surprise. He's an old man uh, who plays you know a, an old retired Sherlock Holmes, struggling to remember things. Like he's got some, I mean, he's old, so his memory is f- uh, failing him, and he spends the entire movie trying to remember the facts of his last case uh, because he's like, for some reason I did something or something happened in this case that made me want to never, you know, work as a detective again. And I can't remember what it was. And I read the story that, uh, that, uh, that Watson put out of it. And, and I saw the movie adaptation of it and I know that these were wrong, but I don't know why they're wrong. So like he's, you know, and it's based on a book, not, part of the original Sherlock Holmes series. Although uh, uh was uh was a lady in gray or something like that an actual Sherlock Holmes book? Uh, uh there's a study in scarlet. 
Yeah, and, well, I, yeah, I, I know about that one. I don't, but I, uh, but I don't believe that that was uh, the one that it's based on. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, I wasn't sure if uh, the like the original story, like the 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 case that he's talking about in the entire thing, is actually a, an actual Sherlock Holmes book or not. But uh, it's something. It it's the color gray, and I think it's uh, the lady in gray uh, is the 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 title that they talk about. But it's it's a really it's a really nice piece, and it jumps uh, uh, jumps time a couple times because it you know it sh- as he's remembering the case, it jumps back to during the case, and then uh, he's like in like a, a a a a cottage or something like that out in Ireland or something like that, uh, and uh, that's where the the present day portion of the the story takes place. And uh, occasionally it'll jump back to his trip in Japan uh, that he went on when he started trying to find alternative medicine ways of helping his memory come back. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I definitely want to check that out. It's it's really good. It's very slow, mm-hmm. but not like painfully slow. It's yeah. just it's just a slow. So they like you're saying they have like. A young Sherlock Holmes, young Watson. Like it's still, it's still Ian McKellen. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's it's basically uh, present day, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Ian McKellen uh, or Holmes is uh, is Ian McKellen with a little bit of old man makeup on. Okay, making him look like ten years or so even older, older than he is right now. And then, uh, quote unquote, young man Sherlock Holmes. It's still his last case, so he's still an old man, and he and and it's and it's after Watson has gotten married and leaves him. Okay, uh, and so it's, but that's Ian McKellen, uh, either as he looks like right now, or even you know with some makeup to look him some make him look a little bit younger. Gotcha. So is there a character or an actor that plays a older Watson in this, or is he just referenced? Uh, there, there is like a scene with a Watson from during the case but mo- the bulk of that case is just sherlock but so no like no memorable scenes with no a watson. no no memorable scene it's not martin freeman uh so who or cares? even an older watson yeah. at this point <laughs> would... it, yeah it would have to be a little bit older than martin freeman although martin freeman and old man make it could probably do it yeah. maybe uh what's his name who played bilbo baggins since they played ian bilbo Holm. baggins together yeah, yeah ian home yeah yeah that would work <laughs> Right age, yeah. I think I think that would be cute if they started playing like young and old versions yeah. of the it's same like, character. Fuck it, yeah, it's like you know what? It worked in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, so let's just do it for everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the audiences like accept him as yeah younger. There's always been talk about a third Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes film as well. I wouldn't hate that. Like I like the, the there's a guy Richie, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't and... mind. I don't mind his. Like I understand. It's a very much like it's a it's a much more like Americanized quote unquote uh, version of the story because it's more violent. You know, Holmes isn't so much just figuring things out because he's really smart, but he's also fighting people and like, you know, there's a lot of action sensibility. Exactly, because it's Guy Ritchie. Well, as far as I know, there was always that kind of version of Holmes that did exist in some of the canon as well. Well. Maybe not like with all the slow motion stuff. Oh but, yeah, no. But yeah, yeah, the idea well, that he was an adept hand to hand fighter, sure. Yeah. yeah, but like the you know, uh, but um, Benedict but, Cumberbatch has you know done what I think is the extent of probably the action that was in the original books, because yeah. he has done physical con you know uh, conflict. Uh, whatever True. You want to combat? Yeah. That was the c word I was looking for. There was always <laughs> there was always the uh, not cunts the um, <laughs> whoa. It's yeah, it's, know, yeah, 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 yeah. We say fuck. I think you. But the um. <laughs> well, I'll wait for the tweets. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. The um, the what's it at Samstone Show? Yeah. The he'd always talk about like if it wasn't for my skills in boxing or short stick, like with his cane, it would always happen like off the page. Yeah. He would right. always like show up like Watson, be like, oh, oh, Sherlock, are you all right? And he's like, yes, yes, of course, my boxing skills came in handy again, old man. And he's just like, oh, of, co- of course, you know, just. We never see him like take out like like big burly men. Whereas there's an entire scene in uh, one of the Robert Downey Jr. ones where he's actually just in like a street fight. Yeah, no, yeah, I know exactly what we're talking about. And then also it's weird too. But I like that scene. It's a really good scene. It's really well shot. There's also the American show Elementary, which yeah, which is awful. 
<laughs> Which I was almost on like 10 times because yeah, I yeah. lived in the neighborhood that they were shooting in. Maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> but, why it was awful? <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't in it? Thank you. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> Take no, that. Go figure an American version like that and almost rarely never any combat in that as well. Yeah. But it had the guy from Hackers, so. Yeah, Johnny Lee yeah. Miller. Yeah. Who I was surprised to find out was English. Yeah. Or at least not American. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. Huge shock for me, too. We've got, what, three, then four if you count Ian McKellen's, like, Sherlock Holmes very much still in the public zeit- or in the public memory. We've got Downey Jr., we've got Cumberbatch, and we've got Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good time to be a Sherlock fan. Yeah. Oh, a great time. Or a terrible time, depending on how you see movie and film and TV. Yeah, all th- or, all yeah, I guess, of what your image in your mind of what Holmes is supposed to yeah. be. Yeah, I just stick with the books. Yeah. The most famous <laughs> is Suck probably... nerds. <laughs> the most famous is probably, or they've done it the most, is probably Basil Rathbone, right? In terms of, like, film, yeah. Yeah, in terms yeah, of, yeah. like, longevity. For it was the film. one that did it, like, during the silent era, or uh, not silent uh, era, but, like, black and white. 30s, 40s. 40s, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I know him mostly they reference. Like, they reference uh, hit the, those movies. I don't. I don't know if they say it by name, but like Ian McKellen's, like, and I saw that movie adaptation of me and Joe. Uh, <laughs> Rathbone did a terrible. dreadful job. <laughs> oh, so this Holmes universe they created for the film, it, uh, other than you know where it's always known that Watson writes about their adventures, that his adventures have become more yeah, serialized. Well, so well, basically, what it's saying is. That there really was a Sherlock Holmes, but well, he, yeah, okay. he he exists within this universe where there were the books that came out, but those were actually written by Watson. Not yeah, well, by, which always existed in Holmes's universes yeah. that he occupied, yeah. and that they made the movies. Oh, and so that, they took it one step further. Yeah, because he's because Sherlock is still alive while the movies are coming out, and this and this, I, I want to say this takes place, um around World War... Yeah, it takes place after World War II, like right after World War II, the movie. Okay. All right. So, yeah, the movies have all come out. They're basically starting production on the Robert Downey Jr. movies. <laughs> 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 By uh, that, I mean Robert Downey Sr. is like a young man, if born yet. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's no, totally makes sense. very pre-production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Robert Downey Jr. Sr., Jesus. <laughs> Robert Downey <laughs> Sr. is going through puberty. And that's the pre pre production of the Robert uh, Downey Jr. He's got storyboards Jr. within storyboards. He's reading Sherlock Holmes and is like, I think my son would make a great Sherlock Holmes. Okay. In 50 years. Got it. 60 years? 60. Yeah. yeah. The first one came out in 2009. Yeah. Because yeah. it was the year after Iron Man. Yeah. He had. Made such a big splash. The the Downissance. Yeah, yeah. That started in 2008 because he had the one two punch with Iron Man and Tropic Thunder that year, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the soloist with Jamie Foxx. Yeah. 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 All great movies. Yeah. Now, before uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, um, there was a trailer. You know, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know, we all really like Birdman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was one of our favorite movies of last year. The uh, Inaritu's next film is The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. The trailer for that looks fucking money. Yeah. It is fantastic. so. You were saying it's all filmed with natural light? That's what I heard. Like, you know, they asked Tom Hardy about why he wasn't in Suicide Squad. I don't know what the actual reason was, but it seemed to be that the movie ran over schedule because well, they were waiting they for were, Magic Hour. Because, yeah, they were, film, <laughs> they were doing, you know, filming with natural light and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in the trailer, I mean, you can tell, too. There's not a single shot where you're, I mean, you just look at it. You're just like, oh, shit. Yeah, watching the trailer, I was like, there is so much fucking going on. I have no idea what any of it is, but I like it. Yeah. Well, it it looks very much kind of like a journey film, kind of like Drums Along the Mohawk or or Northwest Passage, where it's very much... Or Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. That wasn't actually a movie, but I'll take it. It was a journey, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, the... um, I chose a different word to focus (laughs) in on that. The... uh, (laughs) It looks... I don't know, but it does look like they're kind of like on the road, and they're trying to either escape or or wipe out, like, the Native Americans. Yeah, there's some pretty massive battle scenes and and some slaughter going on in that one, for sure. And apparently it's true, whatever it is. Well, it's inspired. Mm -hmm. Everything's inspired. inspired. Inspired means... I was sitting at a stoplight, and I thought, 
what happens if I got ran by a car right now and I was stuck in my car for the next 48 hours? That's inspired by a true story. Based on a true story <laughs> is if you actually got ran by a car and were stuck in your car for 48 hours. I mean, the Mothman Prophecies with Richard Greer is a good inspired exa- by a, a good, true a good story. example And is, a great movie. Is blah, 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 blah. A good example is uh, The Strangers or Strangers. It's inspired by a true story. Um, uh, the director as a child, um, someone knocked on their door like really late at night and asked if anyone was home and they didn't answer the fucking door, you know, because they were like, this is weird. And the next day a house was robbed. And he was like, what if it was like this? And that's, you know, so inspired by true stories means really fuck all. No, oh, okay. <laughs> but but it sells tickets. It does. Yeah, it does. For some I reason. Mean, paranormal yeah, well, like Chains, Chains, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is inspired by true events as much as the fact that Ed Gain was the guy they based it off. Uh, who oddly wasn't, enough, you know, Psycho, also based on Ed Gain. Ed Gain, Gain yeah. yeah. Huh. And Silence of the Lambs. And Dead Skin Mask by Slayer. Yeah. Man, this guy was popular. And Ed Gain, <laughs> the documentary about Ed Gain. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't kill dozens of people being unpopular. <laughs> um, you don't kill dozens of people without making a few friends. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's how it gets. Yeah, that is how Hollywood works, isn't it? <laughs> Killing people, probably. Um, you know, Didn't you see Black Dahlia? <laughs> you know, I was thinking the, uh, speaking of like The Revenant being like this big nature movie, that Robert Redford movie, A Walk in the Woods. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it looks so bad. Yeah, the it's rebooting. Old pal Nick Nolte in it, though. Yeah, being Nick, this like yeah. maximum Nolte. Ro- Robert I Redford. I looked at it and I, I made the comment, like too. I think it was you, Sam, like, hey, look, they're rebooting Grumpy Old Men. Yeah. No, you said that. Yeah, but I made the comment to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you said, like, I thought you were attributing it to me. It's like, no, man. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, that's I all me. I take credit for that <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. I like Grumpy Old Men. I didn't, I never saw the sequel. I did. Grumpier Old Men? Yeah. Was that yeah. more of the same? More of the yeah. same. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, don't fix it if it ain't broke, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's why Grumpy Old Men was basically just Odd Couple. Yeah, the later yeah. years. <laughs> the, um, Much like Odd Couple, the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah, anyway, the, um, <laughs> just, <laughs> grind, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I mean, it was the, it just a walk in the woods, man, looks so fucking bad. Yeah, it did. <laughs> like, well, I saw it and I thought, was it a walk to remember? This is obviously <laughs> being aimed towards so to this. <laughs> the people who are obviously of those two actors age. Yes. Well, there's kind of been like, I feel like, what was, I don't know, was it the bucket list with Jack Nicholson and, and Morgan, Morgan Freeman yeah. that kicked off this wave of like older people like having like going on one final adventure like you had like Last Vegas oh. yeah. <laughs> with Michael Douglas. Old and, Hog. Old, or wild, wild or Hogs. Wild Hogs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> old Dog Speaking like Speaking of, uh, of trailers, uh, before I saw Southpaw, I was sitting in there, and they had like the behind the scenes slash trailer for Ant Man from Uncle. Yeah, I had to fart really bad, <laughs> and I was like, "Southpaw's not a loud movie. I'm not going to sit here and like hold it in when someone goes, Wah, you know, like the entire movie. You know, <laughs> I'm not doing that." Uh, and so, I was waiting. I was like, "Dude, Man from Uncle's got a lot of explosions in it, so I'm going to let one rip when it's like you know explosion time." And it, the, there was that scene when he's like, your new code name, or do you know what Uncle stands for? And I was like, and I was like, oh, shit. And I, like, I, was like, and I, yeah, and I farted, and it, right when it cut to silence, and he goes, your new code name. And I'm just like farting while he was going, your new code name. And I heard a bro behind me go, Jesus Christ, dude. It was funny. And then I ended up farting a lot during Southpaw anyway. But um, he'd be like, here we go, effort. ding, ding. And like coordinating with the bell like a sniper does when like the, you know, they wait for a sh- uh, 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 an artillery round to hit an enemy from the gates. And he the gates is basically what I was doing but farting throughout well, the movie. Your fart was the enemy and well, my fart no, no. were the gates. My fart was the, uh, the, the rifle shot um, and it was being masked by some kind of loud noise. You were telling me earlier that every punch just yeah. people in the theater were like acting like at the climax yeah. of the film. Like I, I mean I've, I saw Rocky Balboa in theaters and nobody did this but like in, in Southpaw people were reacting like the fight was real. Like, so they'd be like, you know, like, you know, oh, his last name's Hope. I don't remember his first name. He's like, oh, Hope's against the wall. He's against the wall. Oh, there's a round of furies and a jab and a jab. And they're like, yeah, here we go. Woo. And like, people were like, yeah, yeah. And then like, you know, spoiler, he fucking wins. Um, 
he knocks out the what? bad John Cena. Yeah, he knocks out the bad guy, and it's like a slow mo, like yeah. <laughs> and like, even though this didn't happen, but there was like that. Uh, I think it's that Eminem song. It was like phenomenon. It's like yeah, I think I farted during one of the phenomenon. It's like really loud. He says it a lot. It's like phenomenon. He knocks down, uh, and he's like, oh, and he's falling down. And this one lady was like, yes, yes. Because you know, I guess that's that's how good the movie was. I mean, I, I <laughs> and how bad Rocky they, Balboa did, was. Did they count along? Mm. No. <laughs> yeah, the woman was saying one, 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 two. two. He, he, he is responsible for your wife's death, and now you're getting back at him, Jake Gyllenhaal. No, but like, uh, and when I when I was leaving, I was like trying to scope out which person it was because there was like there was a fair amount of people there. Um, and even though I wouldn't do that in a movie in a movie because uh, I like to be like silent unless I'm farting. Um, <laughs> You know, I thought it was. I, th- I was like, you know what? That's fun. You know, they're having farting. their fun. Farting is fun, <laughs> but they're having their fun, like clapping along. Like, yeah, woo! Yeah. They did show the Creed trailer before the movie, and I was like, oh, way to set this up for failure. Hmm. Not Creed, but Southpaw. And I remember the reveal of Rocky. Nobody in the theater knew what that movie was, and I could tell because they were like, oh, oh like when I saw it, they were like, what the fuck is this? You know, and the bros were like, bro, 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 bro. And then all of a sudden, he's like, how do you know about all this? And they were like, oh oh shit this one guy was like oh damn like to his buddies like that's fucking rocky Balboa, man that was funny and they also showed the specter trailer too not the new one the teaser i was kind of bummed mm. hello Diesel. james <laughs> yeah <laughs> been waiting a long time yeah you know what's a really cool part about that teaser trailer is that one uh when he's like you're a kite dancing in the wind and the music goes Nyeh! and the music gets like like there's like that weird like it's off like an off kind of like electronic thing mm-hmm. and it right ri- it crescendos and then it it just cuts the the uh, ding, 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 the, the Hans Zimmer's ding, Joker ding, theme. Oh, also, I'm I'm so glad you said that. James Horner did the music yeah. for um, Southpaw, and it was his last film he did music for before he tragically passed away. Uh-huh. And I don't think we, I don't know if he ever spoke about it on here, but all James Horner's music was huge for all of us. I know. Yeah. Oh, Field Dreams. Unbelievably huge. Like the Rocketeer soundtrack is my favorite m- film soundtrack of all time. Mm-hmm. Um and they dedicated the movie to him, which is really nice. At the end of the movie, they they had a thing. Some I don't I think some prints didn't have it because he, you know he died a couple days before the movie right. premiered. Um, which is just I mean it was terrible. I'm but I do it was really nice seeing the outpouring like on Twitter, like people just like everyone was posting their favorite film score from him. You know everyone was like you know it was it was it was really cool and the music was good in it too. Um, but yeah, Field of Dreams is a big one and 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 for me definitely the Rocketeer is like. Primo. That's like you know nothing comes close to that that film score for me. So you know we we lost somebody else we like in, in pop culture recently. Yeah. Uh, Roddy Piper. Yeah, you know one of the uh, probably the first major heel in in re- in WWE. I um, mean, definitely one. Of, yeah, definitely one of the big ones. Um, I don't know enough about. The early days, but I mean, definitely one of the biggest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Piper's uh, Pit, which he kept doing even he after did. he stopped yeah, wrestling. Yeah, he would come out with the leather jacket and the kilt and the hot mm-hmm. rod shirt, which I've always wanted one of those shirts. I mean, now you you know it's perfect time. I mean, but I mean, he was one of those guys that he became a favorite wrestler of mine years after he was done wrestling, mm-hmm. um, because well, he was a big '80s guy. He was a big '80s guy, and like he was in WCW for a while too. Uh, you know, but I think a lot of those guys came over to WCW because the money was huge. You well, know? that and the WWF at the time yeah. was like, we don't want old guys anymore. Yeah. We want young kids. And yeah. WCW was like, their whole uh, uh, financial plan was get established wrestlers to yeah. beef up. But our the problem roster. is, they didn't have a Vince McMahon to like keep them in check. Yeah. It was just free reign. So, yeah. Um, but Roddy Piper was one of those guys. I watched a great documentary. It's not on Netflix, I'm assuming, because they think they took it all off because now the WWE Network is a thing. But if yeah. you haven't seen it, Chris, I would recommend. I know you've been doing a lot of wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it's called, like the life of Roddy Piper. I, I'm sure it, th- there's a whole bunch of things that are now like featured. It's it's yeah. a fantastic documentary about his life and just this wild, funny, crazy guy. Uh, Never been pinned. Yeah, that yeah, it was one of his <laughs> things, and you know he clearly was, but it was just funny how they played it. But he, um, yeah, my dad and I were watching at a watch before I saw Southpaw, and he got like a little text alert. And he was like, "Roddy Piper died," and I mean that was like fucking stunned because you know Roddy Piper's one of the good. He's one of the. It's funny he played a heel, but he was one of the good guys. Like he got out of wrestling okay. Yeah, he had a career. He was a good guy. He had a great podcast. He was in they live. Yeah, they live, and he had a great podcast. He was on It's Always Sunny, one, like one of the best side characters ever on that show, even though he's only in like two episodes. Um, but super memorable, you know? He's in Saints Row 4, or Saints Row the 4th or whatever, which was so cool because Keith David is in the is in it, but not as Keith David. 
Um, and of course, they have the famous like actual brawl in They Live. And so there's a moment where I don't remember the setup, but you go to some dimension or some whatever, and Roddy Piper's there, and he becomes part one of your homies that you can call in the game when you need help. And I would just call Roddy Piper all the time, just so I'd be hanging out with Roddy Piper and, mm-hmm. and Saints Row the Fourth. But yeah, that's a huge, huge uh, loss, and it's totally out of nowhere, totally sudden. You know, he seemed to be in good in good shape. I mean, I know wrestlers have a lot of wear and tear on their bodies, but he never seemed to be, he never seemed to be a guy who got into like the real crazy party lifestyle or anything. Yeah, um, he took it really seriously. And well, he always came off as a guy that had like a strong family life. Oh, absolutely. Like he's got the farm with his family, absolutely, his yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everything. He was always posting stuff about his kids, and I, it's funny. I the only Roddy Piper story I have is. Uh, he said he was going on a plane somewhere on Twitter or something, and I sent him a thing. Wouldn't it be funny if the in-flight movie was They Live? And he wrote back to me, and he was like, oh, God. He's like, I'd have to jump out of the plane, and I'd get stuck in a tree. And knowing my luck, I'd live, and they'd keep uh, having press junkets for me stuck in a tree. Um, but uh, it was touching. I mean, you know, Keith David had a nice thing he wrote about him. and Ronda Rousey dedicated Ronda the Rousey fight did, that she yeah, won that in she 34 seconds. fucking obliterated. It was awesome. Rowdy and Ronda Rousey. Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy Ronda Rousey, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, John Carpenter had a really nice thing to say about him, too, you know, obviously. And, uh, yeah, you know, if yeah. you guys haven't seen They Live, I Check mean, it you, out. you got to see it. It's, 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 it's so much fun. And then after you watch it, be sure to get the Blu-ray copy with the commentary. The commentaries. I, I haven't listened to the commentary myself yet, but John Carpenter, whenever he's got, like, the star, like, you know, whenever he does anything with Kurt Russell, it's fucking awesome. The Thing and the Escape from New York commentaries are top-notch. How is his... Uh, how's his Big Trouble in Little China commentary. I haven't, I haven't listened to that one, actually. I have it right there to watch. <laughs> I, <haven't. laughs> That's what it's, I looked right at it. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's such a bummer, too. Unfortunately, still wrapped in plastic. Because <laughs> one of those things, They Live, is one of those movies, for some reason, every time I saw it, I didn't, you know, it was like the DVD didn't have the commentary or whatever, and I was just like, oh, I got to get the commentary. But, like, now, you know, it's, it's, it sucks that this is the thing that will, like, push you to buy it. But, yeah. Yeah. Um... Apparently, he, didn't he come up with a bubblegum line from that? He film? did, yeah. What he had was a journal that he would write for uh, wrestling, like, you know, for, for uh, things he would say during promos or, you know, during a wrestling uh, when he's on mic, something he would say. And one of the things he wrote down during lunch, not during lunch, they were on lunch break, and John Carpenter's looking through it. And one of the things Roddy Piper had written down was, I come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum. Like, he was going to drop that in somewhere in the WWF, which would have worked perfectly on, on Piper's Pit or something. And, uh, and real quick, the famous thing when he smashes a coconut over Jimmy Snuka's head and like busts his head open and like just tear the set down. That's probably like the most famous Piper's Pit thing. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. And John Carpenter saw that and he's like, we have to put this in the movie. So that's a line that, yeah, that's a line that was co- improvised in a sense that he wrote it down. But I mean, you know, it's something that, yeah, it's it all. It wasn't in the original it, script. Yeah, it's improvised all, as in it was, it yeah, was his yeah, idea. It's all, it, that was all Roddy Piper. And that's the line. I mean, I can't tell you how many people's Facebook pictures I saw as, as that or just quoting that throughout because, um, this is fantastic, and he would always have fun with it too. He'd always be like, I would see him posting stuff on on uh, on uh, Twitter about like you know like Fox News, and they all have like this the alien skeleton faces or whatever they live. <laughs> um, and he would just there was a one of my favorite tweets he had was him and Keith David were backstage somewhere, and they both were like getting ready to throw down because that fight's real. Like it's like the most famous. Yeah, one they of the were most like, famous, we're gonna do actual contact. Yeah, one of the most famous brawls in cinema history. The only thing that don't connect are the the headshots. Everything else, they go for it. I think that's what, like five minutes long it's too? It's long, like five, seven and minutes. South like Park recreated it. Perfectly, <laughs> yeah, in the uh, Cartoon Wars. Uh, a lot of groin shots, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah and just gut shots, and <laughs> you know, and, and he plays the harmonica in it, and just there's so many just awesome moments. Like construction Put the glasses worker. on. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's good, man. But yeah, it's a bummer, because he was just, he was, for, for such a great heel, he was like such a, fucking awesome dude like you know whether it was social media interaction yeah, fans Flair, his podcast I recently called him one of the greatest wrestlers of his generation absolutely yeah and wrestlers always have good things to say about him you know there was never like a oh he sucks or he was yeah. dirty or this or that they just always had uh, it isn't like the ultimate warrior he documentary that, where they just yeah like, unfortunately yeah. yeah he he always had they put out after he died they're like let's put out one where he's like yeah. Uh, not yeah and that's i mean that's two of my all-time that's two of like the all-time definitely my all-time favorite wrestlers you know in like a year or two i don't uh was it last year that uh warrior i thought warrior was like two died? years ago maybe two years ago yeah. right and, the, and then right. dusty Rhodes earlier this yeah, year yeah seriously dusty Rhodes is great um but i mean i saw there was that one meme that was like with wrestling you either die a hero or oh, live yeah. long enough to become the villain and had a picture of hulk hogan um <laughs> but uh 
Poor Hulkster. It's, Poor racist Hulkster. It's uh yeah, that's fucking weird. Yeah. But um it's Yeah, so pull, yeah. Hogan does know best. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brooke Hogan, on the other hand. Brooke I mean, Brooke knows best. She had her own spin off show that lasted like a season. Yeah. If that. I Maybe. watched it. Yeah, I watched <laughs> it too. Um I did not. But anyway, <laughs> tip your hats to the great Roddy Piper. Watch They Live. Check out the podcast he had that was always entertaining and great storyteller. Watch some, you know, Piper's Pit. You know, yeah. watch that documentary. Watch the documentary. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'll wear my kilt to the wrestling event that I'm going to oh, next yeah. month. Oh, it was next month? I'll yeah, it's yeah, big, September. Because he was yeah. still active in the WWE. Yeah. He would show up oh, yeah. and do Piper's no, he was, Pit all the time. He was, he was, he was on, uh, like, right before I started watching. There was this big thing with him and, um, I want to say Rollins. Oh really? Uh, yeah, they had. A he thing. had two really famous uh, feuds with uh, uh, Cindy Lauper <laughs> and Mr. T. I don't know. I always got the vibe that him and Mr. T really didn't like each other, but you can never tell with wrestling. Yeah. Um, even in the documentaries, they like to keep it real. I don't know, but uh, I always got the vibe maybe Mr. T didn't like him. I don't know. Yeah. But that's just one of those wrestling things. But yeah, <laughs> him and Cindy Lauper obviously were, it was just for show because yeah. there's been pictures of them. Oh since yeah, no, they're like best hanging friends. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he loved playing the bad guy. Does anybody know what how he, what what cardiac arrest? Cardiac arrest. Yeah, because he passed arrest. away in his yeah. sleep. Yeah, sixty one years old. Yeah, um, or at least that's always, what I read. Yeah, and he always looked. You know, yeah, he, he always looked, looked, he looked all right good. for an yeah. old guy. He always had that great leather jacket, the yeah. great leather jacket, oh. the hot rod shirt, and the kilt. I mean, that's yeah. it's iconic. That's yeah, yeah, that's up there, man. So it's fantastic. Yeah. So thanks, thanks for all the memories, Roddy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, gonna miss that one. That yeah. one, that one was rough. Yeah, that one, that one stung. Um. Well, yeah. Shit. I kind of brought it down. Yeah. yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 came out. <laughs> yeah, you were telling me about that. Anyone, yeah, anyone watch uh, uh, play it yet? You were telling me about that. I haven't. Oh, shit, I haven't even played it. Do two. they have, like, <laughs> do they have, like, merchandise for that? Like, uh, uh, you can you think, buy, like, I uh, wish. like, a plush or a. Uh, I want. Anim- yeah. I want that. <laughs> I, I, I know my, my friend Kayla. Birthday's coming up. My friend Kayla has uh, a plush foxy. Doll. Foxy, See, then, Foxy. But, What's it gonna and, uh, be? Actually, I have uh, I have another friend uh, who goes to Comic Cons and hang uh, and uh, works through Artist Alley. Um, uh, uh, her uh, she has an Etsy shop. It's called uh, Cyber Squid, I believe. She makes like handmade uh, plush. Uh, here, let me look it up real quick just to make sure that I can properly plug her. Yeah. Um, the... There's a picture of John Cena naked from <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> yeah. Because I was making... Check my Twitter you at E.G. Nolan. Yeah, you don't have, have to explain it. You don't have to explain it. You don't explain it. I was looking at Cena, Pina. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's the first game in the series that doesn't take place in the ice cream or the pizza parlor. You were showing me pictures and it was fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah if what I understand correctly, I think it's supposed to be leading up to... One of the parties. It takes, takes place, place. I think it takes place after the bite of eighty-seven, okay. where the kid gets bitten by the fox, right? And uh, it all takes place in the kid's mind. Like in his mind, he's in his bedroom being stalked by these nightmarish, for like even more fucked up versions of the, of the. There was uh, the one that had like in a the, like like Tim Sale Joker teeth, like just like the never-ending massive teeth. Yeah, so they were sharp. I think that one's a uh, nightmare. Yeah, that animatronic. Well, well named. There's a, um, it, it's more audio based because basically you're listening to see if they're on the other side of the two doors to the bedroom or the closet. Yeah, or the bed right behind you. Or the bed. Do they jump from the bed too? Oh yeah, I've been watching uh <laughs> Twitch streams. Well, Markiplier in of course. particular. Yeah, Markiplier always. You know, he's yeah. the one that really popularized it. Yeah, uh, it's uh, just a treat to watch him play it and just. Nearly shit himself. Yeah. He just didn't And then actually time. shit himself. Yeah. Uh, he was right near us at San Diego, remember? Oh, you guys Wait, almost was, got oh, to oh, see oh, him? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of PewDiePie. I'm thinking of the other guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah not he not was, the Swede. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, yeah, he we you could we saw him the entire time. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Markiplier. Yeah. 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 God damn it. His table was right next to His it. line was nuts. Ours. <laughs> I, I, How did I not know that? I don't know who that is. Uh. I mean, I, I didn't know who that is uh, until I was informed yeah. uh, uh, by some people. Yeah, the... Um, but it's so what you do is with if they're coming in through the hallways or whatever, if they're down at the end of the hallway, you flash your light at them down the hallway. And, and it's like, ah, shit. Yeah. yeah. But if oh. you try to flash the the light down the hallway and they're right on the other side of the door. Slam the door closed as quickly as you can. Well, sometimes they'll just, yeah. Just, yeah, sometimes they'll just fuck the light. Yeah, they'll just kill you, man. Yeah. Um, 
and it looks it kind of reminds me of the bedroom from or the the finale of uh, climax of the first Halloween movie. Yeah, you know that kind of bedroom setting where like, and remember when like Laurie Strode hides in the closet and like Michael's like breaking. sticks him in the eye with the hanger. He's like, oh, oh dang it, oh. Yeah. this is gonna mildly inconvenience me, but we're gonna ignore yeah. it in all the future films, just yeah. like all my other grievous in- injuries. Yeah. Yep, and you get the famous sitting up shot. Yeah, right after, it's awesome. Yeah, he's so badass. But it's like from what I've seen, it's like the scariest one since the first. There's yeah. something about the first that can't because it came out of fucking nowhere, you know. But uh, this one, I think, because the change of setting, yeah, really. I mean, I don't know how much of you, how much of it you've seen. I mean, did quite you a fair what, amount. Did you watch him beat the whole thing? Yeah, interspersedly. Okay. <laughs> like not like one whole run of all the videos. Kind of just. Did it take him longer than the others? Mm, I don't believe so. No, partly know... because he was wearing his lucky flannel, yeah. and also I think he's just gotten better at. Well, two had taken him. him a while. Yeah, no, this one he seems to have mastered pretty quickly. Yeah, so you know, check that out. It's available on uh, available on Steam. It's available on uh, you know, uh, it's on Google Play. By the time this episode posts, it'll be on the uh, on the App Store for all you iOS users. Just scary as all hell, you know. If you've been listening to the show, um, I did, did you? Uh, You've got the stuff on on um, like YouTube of of me shitting my pal- pants. Yes, yeah. pantalones. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Joe, we that know the Sam's videos, gonna be the videos of Sam playing the first. Uh, <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, one are are available on YouTube. So Sam, you've already bought your ticket then for the movie, then right? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, they just got the uh, director, didn't they? They got the guy that directed um, the new Poltergeist. Yes, so. and he's been tweeting out photos of actual real life animatronics that he's going to be using for the film it's going to be <laughs> fucking awesome. unless it's like the new poltergeist in which case I'll, mm-hmm. well I'll if the new it. poltergeist had like a million practical effects then yes yeah but from i you know and i can't i can't in good name in good faith say that the new poltergeist sucks if only because i haven't actually seen it but from yeah, what i haven't I've, seen it yet either from what i want to yeah from what i you know the first poltergeist is one of the first horror movies i ever saw yeah so uh, you know I, that alone piques my curiosity and of course all the marketing they had around like the the clown doll mm-hmm. clown yeah. doll for me is like one of the more traumatizing elements of my childhood like most horror films i won't go to see just because of the obscene blood and gore but a good ghost horror film so i will always go see, go see crimson peak Oh God! It looks yes. like there's going to be a lot of blood in that. I uh, n- there's entire tanks in the cellar in the yeah, trailer. All the snow is red from blood. Uh, well, and no. What's her name is covered in blood. Yeah, that's clay because of the. That's setting what they call the it house. now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what Josh calls it. No, no. <laughs> they they specifically said that the house sits on blood red clay. So and Virginia clay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Indian clay, I think, was the but term. no, like yeah. um, at least it was yeah. it the Shining. Didn't that have like a elevator yeah. scene with gallons of blood? Mm-hmm. But oh it was yeah, still, hundreds of gallons. But yes. it was still a ghost story, which they they uh, have a kind of a tip of the hat to in Kung Fu Hustle. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, they do. Uh, quick update: uh, the store was called Cyber Scribe, and it appears to be closed. But you can search the internet well, to testicles. see to see examples of what her plushes looked like. See, I feel like if you were to get to get merchandise surrounding Five Nights at Freddy's, you wouldn't want something like a plushie. You'd well, want I something mean, a little more... Well, what she she made plushies, and they were, like, geek-inspired and stuff well, like yeah, that. Well, yeah, no, I get that. So she just made, you know, like, Foxy and Clucks and Fries. With that. I don't know any of the other names. Uh, Chica, Bonnie, Freddy... Um, and then when you branch into two, you've got Balloon Boy, um, the Marionette, and all the toy versions. Yeah, she she just uh, as far as I remember, she only had the first uh, the first game covered. But okay, she was she was at Katsukon last year selling them. Uh, Wasn't uh, Otakon this past weekend? Yes. Yes. No one went. Okay. I mean, I'm sure people <laughs> went, but none of us went. Yeah. Unless, like Jake, you went. No, we had representation there, but I didn't go from the shop. But uh, also, Wonder uh, Wizard World Richmond was this past weekend, and none of us got to go to that either. No, I just got drunk in DC yeah. last. That's night. weird. I'm still getting adverts on my Facebook feed for that. Well, 
It could be I mean, until today because today's the la- was the last day. Of, okay. Yeah. It was real Richmond at the time of recording. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so you know, Josh, we record several days before we post these. <laughs> <laughs> by so. the time by the time this episode posts, I can almost guarantee. Almost. Yeah. Unless like Wizard World's like keep keep working. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. we're gonna go for a whole week. You don't know us. Yeah. We're Stranger? Wizard World. Let the people know what they missed. We Stranger have Jason David happen. Frank here. <laughs> We because he's at D. all of our cons. Billy D. Williams. Apparently, Billy D. wasn't there. Oh, did he end up canceling? I, well, so I was. Uh, so one of the guys that I work with was talking about. Oh, I don't know if I want to go for the last day because uh, one of his favorite wrestlers. I forget who, but one of his favorite Dolph wrestlers. Dolph Ziggler. I wish Dolph Ziggler were there. Uh, I don't know if he. He he got really badly injured, so I don't know if he was able to to go. Uh, but uh, he was like, uh, you know, I might might have to go on Sunday, and I was like, oh, you can see. Uh, uh, <laughs> You can see, you can see, uh, you know him, and he was like, "Nah, he's not there." And I'm like, "But I thought he was gonna be there." Yeah, until they announced Shatner, he was the centerpiece of all the advertising. Him and Billy Piper. Yeah, the two Billies. The greatest Billies. If only they had Billy the Red Ranger, they'd yeah. complete the set. <sighs> but that's David Yost. Oh yeah, that's right. Billy's <laughs> the Blue Ranger. God damn it! Yeah, I didn't watch. Well, no, no, uh, <laughs> uh, Billy's the character's name, but uh, David, David Yost, Yost is his is real the, name. Yeah. But the re- yeah, the Red Ranger's Jason. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. 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 Right. I was gonna <laughs> I, let that I, slide. I, I slid past that, <laughs> and I was just like, well, "Too bad his name's David." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been the Red Ranger when he went to the Water World. <laughs> he could have. He could. I remember that. Yeah. 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 Um, Aqua Rangers or something. Call Kenneth. Kenneth knows. Ken yeah. knows more about Power Rangers than I know about. Um, my genitalia, uh, but he still doesn't know what the frequency is. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the throwback to last week. Yeah, great REM song too. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, so yeah, check out Five Nights at Freddy's Four. It's available on those platforms. I'm looking for merchandise right now, and all I can find are T-shirts. God yeah. damn it! Yeah, like I said, uh, wait for the movie. Yeah, and it's crazy because the developer Scott Cathon, who does like all the development and all that stuff. At this time last year, he was working at a Dollar General under three high schoolers. Now that's so fucking. Now at the time of this recording last year, or at the time of it being published, because I, I don't want to confuse Josh. <laughs> <laughs> last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck time. Yeah. Just fuck it. Yeah. Now, now, are you really excited for the movie? Uh, you're not going to. You're not going to, you know, be a cautious Star Wars fan and assume that Star Wars Episode 7 is going to be awful when all of us are really excited about it. You're going to just... You're you're going with... There's no way Five Nights at Freddy's the movie is going to be bad. Yeah, exactly. So it's not going to pull like a Street Fighter Legend of Chun-Li. No. Nope. It's going to be a Mortal Kombat. Or Mortal yes. Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> all the Mortal Kombats are gold. Ooh. Ooh. You know what's Have you seen like the first Mortal Kombat one? Annihilation? <laughs> Those would be so... <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh, Mortal Kombat. I have an just. <laughs> yeah, I was always Still in, in terms of video game. I was always more Street Fighter, but in terms of movie, I was always more at least the first Mortal Kombat. Actually, I have both Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter on Laserdisc. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> Jean Claude like on Dude, the, the spotlight or whatever. The, the Jean Claude Van Damme Street Fighter Laserdisc is intense. They went all out. Like it was a good movie. <laughs> Jeez, they're yeah. just like not a guilty pleasure, yeah. like it is for me. Yeah, <laughs> just a straight up full on pleasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it is for Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, ever play Street Fighter the movie, the game? No, it's basically like I've a played mo- Power Rangers the movie, the game. Well, it's basically a great game. The uh, best Genesis game. <laughs> it was a. Um, I, I like Streets of Rage too. I like the. Um, it was an. It was a. It used real life sprites like Mortal Kombat. Mm. It used like everyone from the movie. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to s- play as Ming Na Wen, you know, <laughs> from Agents of Man, Shield, who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then that was your chance. So. Or as Kylie Minogue. You can totally be Kylie Minogue as Cammy. You nice. can totally. I don't know if you can be Raul. Ju- I think the only one they weren't able to do because he died, you know, soon after production was Raul Julia. I think you might. It might be a different actor for for Bison. You played, yeah, M Bison, right? Yeah. yeah. I had an M Bison uh, action figure. His hands were like glow in the dark. Oh, with nice. the psycho power. I guess yeah. That's what yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was always Vega. Because the mask. Because the mask. Yeah. 
Then he you knock it off, and I was like, "Fuck you, game." He would do more damage, but he would take more damage yeah. if you took off his mask. Yeah, Mine was, was um, what's his name? The 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 yoga guy. Doll uh, seam. Yeah, I don't know why, but I I, I think I like the stretching arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Punch people from the other massive side of the reach on that one. He also yeah. had uh, reminded me of myself. He had one of the highest uh, damage outputs too. Yeah, that was probably another thing because I was a shitty player. So yeah. Do you have a favorite Street Fighter character, Josh? Yeah, mine's was the stretchy guy as well. Uh, him uh, or the uh, uh, enough, was favorite favorite character? No idea what his name is. <laughs> him or the Beast? The, the green guy, oh, yeah. Blanca. I was Blanca. Liked him. I always yeah. liked him. I always thought it was weird that his name I, was. My brother Blanca. had an action figure. Him. He's my best character. Nice. Blanca. Um, like I'm his, not good. I liked his pizzas. Uh, Vegas, my favorite, <laughs> but I'm terrible at Street Fighter. So yeah, no, I, I, I am. Despise fighting games just because I have no skill for them, but I enjoy the not characters. Even, not even an appreciation. No. From afar. No, not really. <laughs> it's like if I can't play it, I don't like it. <laughs> no, if I can't play it well, I don't like it. I mean, if it bleeds, we can kill it. So. Yeah. So, are you good at columns on the Sega Genesis? I have no idea what that is. So you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that I don't even know what it is, so I can't so not. Like it. I can't hate it. Do you like? Do you like Qbert? No, because he was in Pixels. Uh, uh, but he was oh, also in oh, Wreck-It so Ralph. <laughs> so Ralph. okay, he damn. redeems himself for that. Yeah. So he's back to neutral. Well, guess, yes. like, well, since Wreck-It Ralph came out first, though, was it like he was up on a pedestal? Yeah, and he got now dropped he's back down. Yeah, <laughs> shifted him into neutral. Did anyone see Pixels yet? No. Better hurry before it like gets thrown out of theaters. Yeah, you only get they only have two week commitments, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, Fantastic I, Four. <laughs> you know, that's what my eight dollar Netflix subscription is for, Sam. I'm gonna Pixels. waste eight dollars a month on Pixels. <laughs> <laughs> if it was on Netflix, I'd watch it. I'd pr- if yeah, I if yeah. I wasn't watching like Hercules: The Legendary Journeys or Star Trek: The Next Generation, sure. But yeah. speaking of Netflix, <laughs> and then you just go back to Hercules <laughs> just so you can watch the disappointed scene yeah. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Have any of you watched uh, Wet Hot American Summer's first day of camp yet? No, no I've yet, been meaning to. Yeah. I kind of wanted to film. rewatch the movie first, just because it's been years since I've seen yeah. the movie. Yeah, literal years for me too. I feel as like if you well. have seen the movie, this probably would make more sense to you because it's supposed to be a prequel to it, which I had no idea going into mm-hmm. it. But I mainlined all eight, yeah, eight episodes uh, Saturday. Eight 30 minute episodes, four hours total. Yeah, and uh, I, I absolutely nothing. loved it. Yeah? Although I was a little weird a few times, like... um. There's a few fight scenes in it where you can very clearly tell they didn't try to hide that they were using stunt doubles. Well, what I love about, like, David Wayne is, like, he's clearly, like, we know this is going to be low budget. Let's embrace it being low budget. Oh, yeah, and they did that very well, and... Unlike um, how, like, Sharknado embraces being low budget. (laughs) Yeah. It's a different kind of embrace. (laughs) (laughs) And the... This is... (laughs) Wet Hot American Summer is based on love. Sharknado is based on abuse. Yeah. <laughs> and the idea And of you can put that in the tagline. <laughs> hearing the actors continuously say, you know, by the way, I am 16, and being like... Yeah, yeah, because they're clearly supposed yeah. to be younger than they were in the film. Oh, yeah. And this which is like was 20 like 20 years later. Yeah. Not 20, but... Uh, 15. Yeah. yeah, yeah but true, I, yeah. I saw a... Tra- I, I decided to watch a trailer for the film after finishing the series, and it's like, a lot of these people really haven't aged at all, which is... Paul Rudd, sure. Impressive. Yeah. But also kind of frightening. Isn't Michael Ian Black in it? <laughs> yeah. 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 And Michael Schultz. Basically the entire Stella Troop. Yeah. yeah. The entire cast of the film, including one girl who somehow magically goes through puberty, we'll say, and become... Uh, that's probably what it is. <laughs> yeah. And become a character that's in the movie instantaneously. Yeah. Well. Yeah, good for her. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to it because, you know, I enjoy the film and, you know, I enjoy most of what David Wayne does. Well, if this if the show is indicative of exactly of what the film <laughs> is, then I'm going to love the film, that. I think. Yeah. All right. Right on, man. Yeah. So watch, you know, watch the Wet Hot American Summer on Netflix. Play Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Get fucking They Live. Like, buy copies for your friends. Yeah. Hmm. And a Hot Rod shirt. Yeah. And watch. I need to, I need to do that. Uh, it's only like $25 on WWE Shop. Nice. There you go. And also, by the time this episode is posted, the Deadpool trailers will oh, have yeah, right. dropped. Yeah. Both the red band, hopefully, footage from Comic-Con, and the regular green band made for everyone. No one's going to watch this piece of shit trailer. 
They'll probably Peace. watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. This has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good night, Eric Bonner. Are you kidding me? Just, just go there, geek out, have a good time.